G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to an aquaponics video on the channel, who to thunk it? Uh, today we're actually heading off to Kerrville, Texas, USA. G'day Steve. Steve and I have been chatting up for quite some time, just asking questions about his system. He's been asking questions about aquaponics and I must say he has got one of the most fantastic integrated aquaponics systems that I think I've ever seen. It's got everything from media beds, towers, NFT, DWC, dual root zone, sand beds, and he's using both ornamental and table fish to grow his food. So just to let you folks know, Steve acknowledges that his integrated aquaponics system is a little bit complex, but if you stick around to the end, he explains why it has ended up this way. Now, without any more rabbiting on, let's join up with Steve at the sump tank of his integrated aquaponics. Okay, we're starting off with this first pump. Uh, 1,200, no, it's just 1,900 gallons an hour right here. It goes up. He's right there, feeds the Dutch bucket, feeds this gravel bed, and goes that way. And then carries on this way, and it tees behind this shroud that I made to keep my dog out of my goldfish food. Goes up, feeds that bed, feeds this fish tank. Feeds my babies right here. So when it goes around, it goes down, and feeds these dual root zone beds they're just old tomatoes it's way too hot outside for them they're past their prime but they're absorbing nitrogen but okay so it goes that way and then into this dual root zone bed that i have here too bell peppers there's a bell pepper bell pepper so after it feeds that bed there's got that tea right there which i believe is this pipe right here that comes down here it is right here, and it feeds this fish tank, my tilapia tank, it comes up and feeds the deep water culture bed right here. Here's my tilapia. Yeah, there they are. And they're not my pets, so I'm gonna eat them. Goldfish are safe though. Yeah, here again, another shroud I made to keep my dog out of the fish food. That's what this bowl is for, cast iron heavy. All right, I'll show you what the next pump does. This pump right here, I believe, no, that's a 1200 gallons an hour. It goes up to the ceiling and it tees. It makes a loop around the place just to try to keep all the pressure the same. Going this way, got this T that feeds my NFT system. This system works good. I mean, right now all I have is greens in it because uh, I want to keep stuff out of the sun. But the, when I put a tomato in it, they freaking grow. I mean, it, the system works good. I put it over these beds in case it ever leaks or anything that it would overflow into a gravel bed. If something would catch it. Uh, out of the NFT system, it goes into this Dutch bucket with basil. It flows into this Dutch bucket with the sunflower in it, which goes into my goldfish tank. I think that's the only pipe that doesn't drain into the sump. I just said screw it, it was way too easy to dump it into the fish tank. This T feeds the NFT that way, and then it goes straight to my towers. I have my towers kind of manifolded in equal pipe lengths to equalize the pressure, and, and it did a good job. I had some problems at the start with uh, maybe say a middle tower not getting as much water as the other two. And then by the time you get home from work, it had no water going through it and plants did die. Then I just turned everything up and I haven't worried about it since. Uh, we've got some tomatoes. Um, of course, we got basil everywhere in this place. But the towers, they drain into these cut pieces of pipe which go under the ground. Uh, that pipe ties into this pipe under the ground right there. And then they go up and down into my sump. And if I could do that over, I would have made these pipes going down in the ground three inch just for peace of mind. And really and truly, towers should be built over beds just in case there, there's leaks in towers. I mean, I don't lose a lot of water right now. I mean, really, I don't lose any, but it's better over a media bed, that's for sure. And I should have done that. And I'm not done so, with this project at all. And I know that it's eventually gonna happen. 
Okay. This last pump is uh, 800 gallons. It goes straight up through this media bed, through a bulkhead. It enters the bottom of this tower. It goes all the way up to the top of it, where there's a diffusion plate, and it drips down through the tower, and it works really good. Really good. There's some tomatoes in there right now, and uh, a lot of flowers. I mean, not too much is really growing all that well in the middle of the summer besides flowers. I'll let them, I'll let them keep growing. That tower is operated on intervals of 15 minutes. 15 on, 15 off, 15 on, 15 off. I don't know, would you call that aeroponics? I think that's what I'm gonna call it. I like it, it works good. If I had my way, if I could do it all over again, I'd just put them towers like that on top of media beds and, and fill up the media beds with towers. Just gonna interrupt Steve here for a moment. I just wanted to let you folks know that I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide available again. It is an online video-based guide, 1995 US, link down in the description. It doesn't cover every grow method that Steve has used, but those methods will be added down the line. I'm constantly adding bits and pieces every month or so at the moment. And when we get a new system, I'll be doing complete build videos that will be added to the guide. But anyway, it's for sale again for you folks who have been waiting. Uh, 1995, link below. That's enough trying to pay the bills. Now we'll join back up with Steve and keep going with the system. All right, out of my goldfish tank, the fish waste is drained into this radial flow filter. In this radial flow filter, there's a pump sitting down at the very bottom it pumps out the fish waste settled down at the bottom and it pumps it into my sand beds right here and here. Um, this is a Dutch bucket system, which I'm not even sure if it's in the AIVS uh, handbook anymore, but it works well. Well, beside this ghost pepper plant, uh, it's wilted. It, well, summer's getting to it. I don't know what the a AIVS dude would think about me using cocoa core in there either, but it's working good. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. And the best part about it is it's just using fish waste that I would normally just get rid of, like a, scoop it out and go put it under a tree or something. You could put it in a mineralization tank and aerate it. I don't know how long you would aerate it, I mean, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. If you did and you processed it and put it back in your system, I mean, how do you really know if it's working or not? I can see right here with my eyes what the sand bed's doing. And it's all just uh, nutrition that I wouldn't otherwise get. I like it. These are my rainwater grow pools. I don't know the official terminology for them. Who was that guy? Larry Hall. He, uh, he was a creator of this, I believe. But these have, I've found to be the best way to germinate seeds. Uh, man, I just plop them in there then two days later, they're they're up and growing. Right now, I've been trying to transfer my green beans into my sand bed, and I really, really want to get a whole bunch of them growing in here because it's about all I've found that'll grow this time of year is the green beans in this heat. And heck, they're they're probably going to stop pretty quick too. It's only going to get hotter. My deep water culture bed right here. Here we are, a whole lot more green beans, just because I know they'll grow. And I have this cantaloupe, it's not a cantaloupe, but it's a melon. And I've never tried to grow a melon before, but I haven't seen any female, female flowers. And I assume because of the heat, I'm probably not. But I need something to absorb the nitrogen, so I, I'll leave it. Okay, the water comes out of the ground here and it splits, that goes to the RO. And if you look where I installed this RO, that was definitely an oversight. It's going to be pretty hard to change the filter. But okay, so into the RO, then it goes into this storage tank right here. But this storage tank goes to these two storage tanks right here. They're all manifolded together. The, these act as a RO reservoir. And when the system's running low, this is a float right here. When the, the water gets low in here, watch. What? I'm gonna push it down. Well, look at that. See how it's not running? Put the float down. Ah. 
and it'll go up until the float floats and it'll stop. Okay, so the RO water goes into this barrel, but that T's right there, and then you have two more lines going under the ground. One goes over here, comes out of the ground over there, and comes into this barrel, and this barrel has a float on it, and it feeds underground to these rainwater grow pools. And the other line that goes underground comes up to the top of my shop where I have a storage container with another float on it and it goes down and feeds my quail right there. And they're three weeks old, these quail are. They still don't know how to use them nipples. Yeah. I may have to Google how I can get them to because I right now I have to water them every, every day and I like automation. And there was a glance at my system. I know that one major criticism about it is going to be that it was too complicated. And it is. It's way too complicated. Way too complicated. And if I could do it over, I would. Uh, man, if you think this is kind of cool, if I would, if I'd start this all over, I could make it bad ass, bad ass. But I'm not going to. Um, and it all started with expansion. You know, I started off with one IBC. A few weeks later, it turned into three IBCs, then a DWC, and then a tilapia tank. NFT came later, and towers, and a RO water storage, and then I put floats in it for auto filling. And uh, yeah, so there it is. I'm happy with it. And don't even think I'm done with it. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to buy another uh, section of this carport stuff and put it over there. And then uh, definitely going to get these towers under a media bed. And uh, I'm going to add a lot more towers. I think that towers are the way to go. I really do. I mean, you could grow a lot of stuff in them. <clears throat> but there it is. So there you go, folks. Tell us what you thought of that system down in the comment section below. It is really pretty much well the most comprehensive grow bed side of things system that I've seen. I mean, media beds, towers, NFT, DWC, um, the sand beds, and also the dual root zone. It's pretty much well all there. And it's also great to see him start to venture out to things like quail and raising other livestock in the backyard. So once again, thank you very much, Steve. I really do appreciate you allowing us to check out your system and also too, for all the chats we've had online. It's been great um, learning your experiences with different growing techniques like the dual root zone and the sand beds as well. So thank you very much, sir. So we will pretty much we'll leave it there. Thanks once more for coming along and checking out the channel. More aquaponics and hydroponics and farming content will be coming very soon. I hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens, aquaponics and farms are booming and we will catch you next video. Cheers folks and have a top one.